Good morning, everybody, and happy Thanksgiving. Um, hope everyone has some time to spend with someone else this weekend and um, has some time to thank and appreciate God. Um, when I was thinking about speaking this morning on, um, I know it is Thanksgiving, um, and it kind of seems, you know, like a token thing to give a Thanksgiving message, but it's what I'm going to do because I think Thanksgiving is so important and so powerful. So any opportunity we get to talk about thanking God and, and, and praising Him, I think is, is a good opportunity. So that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. And um, God showed me a story in the Gospels to go from... So we're going to start in the book of Luke, chapter 17, uh, starting in verse 11 and going to verse 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master! Have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Um, so there's a lot in that section, and you could really dig into it and pull a whole bunch of things out. Um, but we're going to mainly talk about the last part. Um, and when this, this one person who had leprosy came back to Jesus and thanked him and praised him. Jesus's response wasn't to say, "Ah, oh, don't don't mention it. Don't worry about it. I do this all the time. It's no big deal. Go on your way." It was actually very different and more purposeful. He said, "We're not all 10 cleansed." Where are the other nine? And I don't believe he was saying this because he wanted or needed the thanks and praise. Um, but I believe he was saying this for a couple reasons and probably reasons that I don't know as well. Um, and it's because thanks and praise have both kingdom and relational importance. Um, in a kingdom sense... Thanks and praise are a natural way for us to respond to God, to his intervention when he does something or just to, to who he is because he's so awesome and holy. Um, we were intended to thank and praise him. We were created for it. And in the Psalms, it says that all creation praises him. So it's our natural kingdom response um, and I'm going to read Psalm 100, verse 4, to talk about the relational aspects. It says, We enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. God's gates are always open. Jesus actually refers to himself as the gate. And so his gates are open, but what thanks does is thanks keeps us aligned and centered on Jesus. He's always there, he's always available, but thanks helps us be aligned and in tune with him. We can have, um, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of negative news that we take in, there's lots of negative stimuli around us. We can be so self-critical ourselves, but when we start to give thanks, when we take that step, even if we don't feel like it, when we give him thanks, then 
our demeanor changes, our mindset changes, and we become focused and centered on Jesus. So thanks helps us cent- uh, center on the most important thing, uh, who's God. And then praise, it deepens our fellowship with him. So gates, gates are on the outskirts, they're how we enter, and courts is, is close um, to the center. And like I said, praise deepens our fellowship. It brings us closer to him. Um, the message says Psalm one of Psalm 100 verse four, like this, enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourself at home talking praise. Thank him. Worship him. I love that. Enter with thank you. Make yourselves at home with praise. And Psalm 22, 3 tells us that God is enthroned on the praises of his people. We get to know him deeper, even more in our praise. So both thanks and praise are key parts we play in maintaining a thriving relationship with God. Because our relation, relationships are two ways. Our relationship with God is two ways. He's always there. He's always willing. He's always open. He's always encouraging. He's always full and thriving. Um, but part of the part that we can play is to thank him and praise him, which aligns us with him and helps us draw closer and, and grow more into him. Uh, thanks and praise both acknowledge Jesus as the center, as the most important. Um, In the story that I mentioned earlier, the healing is is important. It's it's incredible, you know? He heals 10 men who cry out to him for the healing. But it's not the most important thing in this story. The most important thing in the Bible, in these stories in the gospel, is always Jesus. He's always the most important, and the thanks and praise is equally or more important than the healing that happens. Um, It's possible that the other nine received their healing and just went on their way, just doing life like they normally would, um, but with healed bodies, but not with the one who returned. It says that as they went on their way, they were healed. And this guy who returned from G- to Jesus, he couldn't keep going to the priest. He couldn't keep that instruction. He had to go back to see God because he encountered the Savior. He encountered the Creator. And he realized that when he was healed and he came back and it says that he threw himself at Jesus' feet and praised him with a loud voice and thanked him. It wasn't just his body that was changed that day. For him, everything had changed. Eternity had changed when he met Jesus. So he had to come back and thank him and praise him. And uh, that's, that's, that's the response that we're created to have. That's the response that Jesus was looking for. Did, did they not also encounter me? Or did they just get the healing and continue on? Um, thanks is so important, um, that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18, uh, Paul says this, he says, rejoice always, pray continually or pray without ceasing in some translations, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So it's a very common verse. Um, We use it a lot, but it's so powerful and significant. It says that these three things that he's talking about are God's will for us. God's intention and his will for us is to be this way. So it says rejoice and in the original text, the way that it is talking about rejoicing is really active. And, and one of the commentaries I've read says this. It says, the emphasis on joy 
is not so much on the experience of joy, but the active expression of it. An action, an attitude, it's a stepping into, even when we don't feel like it. It's choosing to, choosing joy, choosing to be joyful. My circumstances are horrible right now. They, 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 um, joy isn't represented in my circumstance or happiness isn't re- represented in my circumstance, but I'm going to rejoice anyways because I have this eternal relationship with a living God who loves me and cares for me. I've been put into a family that he has provided for me. There's always ways to um, rejoice and things to be thankful for. Then it says pray, pray continually, which is also active um, you know, prayer is a dialogue between us and God. It's a conversation, something that we can carry on throughout our day. Um, but it's not just meant to be talking. Um, it's also seeking direction. It's asking his input. God, what would you like me to do? What would you like me to say to this person? What now, God? God, I have, a dis- I have this choice to make. What do you think I should do? And, and it's following through on the input that he gives. And then give thanks in all circumstances. This keeps, keeps Jesus as the most important, as the center, always. Pr- give, give thanks in all circumstances, not just in the good circumstances, not just when we've been given something that we really appreciate, but in all circumstances, even in the hard circumstances. And this is something that is really significant to Paul's message and and his ministry because he's been through a lot. He's been stoned. He's been beaten. Um, He's been hated and um, he's been imprisoned. But he says that, you know, even when he has a little or when he has a lot, he's learned how to be content in all situations. And he knows that it's possible to be thankful no matter our, our circumstance. And there's a spiritual um, key in that, that we can thrive even in the most difficult circumstances. Um, thanksgiving cultivates contentment. Um, sometimes we can, you know, when we're feeling low, when we have a low mood, if we're ever feeling depressed, um, you know, in those states, we, we sometimes don't want to do anything um, but if we, if we start to be thankful and if we incorporate thankfulness into our daily life, it gives us reasons to rejoice and it fixes our mindset on things that are holy and positive and good and it can help cultivate contentment in our life. It can change our, help change our mood and our, our uh, mindset. Uh, what Paul's talking about here, rejoicing always, praying t- continually, giving thanks in all circumstances, it is, it's a lifestyle and <clears throat> it's powerful. So thanks opens the door to fellowship with God. And as I said, his door is always open, but it helps align us and center us with him, keeps us seated in our mind, body, and spirit right with him. And... And, and praise helps us go even deeper. Um, if we take some time to ask God more about 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, and we put it into practice, I really believe that it will honor God and it will transform us. It's, it's what we are like as a people. It's a hallmark of us. Um, but how great it is and how great it will continue to be as these are characteristics of our lifestyle, our life with him, rejoicing always, praying continually, giving thanks in all circumstances, because this is it. This is his will for us. And um, we'll be centered on him, which is awesome because it's all about him. It's all about Jesus. Thanks, everyone. Again, Enjoy your Thanksgiving and hope to see you in person sometime in the near future.